Hi there. Our highly valued, treasured and esteemed viewers and listeners and welcome back to your channel of choice. This video I am about to present was compiled by our senior colleague, Dr. Nath Arua, a clinical pharmacist by training and profession who is the founder of Progressive Pharmacotherapy Consultants, the premier virtual clinical pharmacy institute for capacity building for healthcare workers. The Virtual Clinical Pharmacy Institute with a difference. Where patient safety, medication therapy management and optimal clinical outcomes are very crucial and non-negotiable to us. Here, we seek to remain your premier source of crucial tips for high-impact pharmacotherapy services so. On behalf of Nath Arua and the Institute. I humbly urge you all to sit back and spare me part of your very precious time to share with you very useful tips which may prove very, very handy in your line of duty. I now welcome you all to part 393 of our pharmacotherapy series, which majors in seizure disorders. The next clinical case reads, TRS, a 34-year-old man, has been taking phenytoin 200 mg twice daily for the past seven weeks to control complex partial and secondarily generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Seizures began approximately four months ago after surgical evacuation of a subdural hematoma. Today he appears at the walk-in clinic and complains of an itchy rash that began two days ago. He describes feeling lousy for the past week. On examination, he is febrile, that is 38.5 degrees Celsius orally. A maculopapular, scaly, erythematous rash covers his upper extremities and torso, and the mucous membranes of his mouth appear to be mildly inflamed. Cervical lymphadenopathy is noted, and the liver is found to be enlarged and tender. TRS also relates that his urine has become very dark in the past two days and that his stools are light colored. So my question to you is, what is the significance of TRS's skin rash and other signs and symptoms? Are these likely to be related to his phenytoin therapy? Skin-related adverse reactions, e.g., rash, or urticarial, are relatively common, that is 2% to 3% of patients. Side effects related to anti-epileptic drug therapy. Skin rash is most commonly associated with phenytoin, lamotrigine, carbamazepine, and phenobarbital. Most cases are relatively mild but severely affected patients may exhibit Stevens-Johnson syndrome or a systemic hypersensitivity syndrome accompanied by severe hepatic damage. In TRS's case, signs and symptoms suggesting hepatic involvement accompany the skin rash. Fever, lymphadenopathy, and apparent inflammation of mucous membranes also suggest a hypersensitivity reaction to phenytoin with multisystem involvement and the potential for progression to Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Viral infection, e.g., hepatitis, influenza, or infectious mononucleosis, should be considered and ruled out as a possible cause of TRS's symptoms before they are attributed to phenytoin therapy. Dress syndrome, which stands for drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms, is a type of hypersensitivity syndrome that can occur with some drugs, including phenytoin and other anti-epileptic drugs, that is most commonly seen in adults. Typically, patients with this syndrome present with complaints of fever, skin rash, and lymphadenopathy during the first two months of anti-epileptic drug therapy. Hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, jaundice, or bleeding manifestations may occur.
Laboratory manifestations often include leukocytosis with eosinophilia, elevated serum lilirubin, and elevated AST and ALT. When a phenytoin hypersensitivity reaction includes significant hepatotoxicity, fatality may occur in as many as 38% of affected patients. A high likelihood exists that TRS has developed a severe reaction to phenytoin. The clinical manifestations and the timing of their appearance are typical of this reaction. Phenytoin should be discontinued immediately pending diagnostic clarification. TRS should be hospitalized for evaluation of other possible causes of his symptoms such as viral illness and treatment. Treatment of phenytoin-related hypersensitivity and hepatotoxicity is symptomatic and supportive. Intensive therapy with corticosteroids has commonly been used, although little objective evidence exists for beneficial effects of this treatment. Potential complications of this reaction include sepsis and hepatic failure. These conditions should be treated specifically. TRS was hospitalized and treated with oral prednisone and topical corticosteroids. Other potential causes for his condition were ruled out, and his signs and symptoms were attributed to cutaneous and systemic phenytoin hypersensitivity. His fever resolved within five days. The skin rash became exfoliative, but resolved without infectious complications. Laboratory parameters began to normalize after 10 days. While he was hospitalized, TRS experienced three generalized tonic-clonic seizures that were treated acutely with administration of IV lorazepam. TRS was a febrile at the time these episodes occurred. So my question to you is, what information regarding the pathogenesis of phenytoin hypersensitivity and hepatotoxicity can be used to guide selection of an alternative anti-epileptic drug for TRS? Further administration of phenytoin to TRS is contraindicated on the basis of his history of a severe hypersensitivity reaction to this drug. Although the mechanism of this reaction is not fully understood, research implicates reactive RNA oxide metabolites of phenytoin and other chemically similar anti-epileptic drugs as possible causative agents for hypersensitivity reactions. Affected patients purportedly are predisposed genetically to the development of hypersensitivity, possibly because a relative deficiency of epoxide hydrolase enzymes allows the accumulation of toxic concentrations of reactive epoxide metabolites. These metabolites are believed to exert a direct cytotoxic effect and to interact with cellular macromolecules thereby functioning as haptans that stimulate an immunologic reaction. Carbamazepine, phenytoin, and phenobarbital all are metabolized by similar pathways and converted to reactive RNA oxides. It is hypothesized that carbamazepine-induced liver damage also may result from the effects of accumulation of reactive epoxide metabolites. These reactive metabolites differ from the 10, 11 epoxide metabolite that accumulates during carbamazepine therapy. For this reason, these drugs potentially cross-react in susceptible patients. Cases of apparent cross-reactivity between phenytoin and phenobarbital or carbamazepine have been documented. In addition, both carbamazepine and phenobarbital can produce hypersensitivity reactions similar to those seen with phenytoin. 
This potential for cross-reactivity should be considered when an alternative anti-epileptic drug is selected for TRS An analysis of cases of anti-epileptic drug-related skin rashes found that the most significant non-drug predictor of skin rash was the occurrence of a rash with another anti-epileptic drug. Valproate has been suggested as the preferred alternative anti-epileptic drug for patients who have exhibited hypersensitivity reactions to phenytoine. Valproate is not metabolized to RNA oxides and also is chemically dissimilar to all other anti-epileptic drugs. Because valproate often shows good efficacy for complex partial seizures with secondary generalization, it would seem to be a safe and potentially effective alternative anti-epileptic drug for TRS of the newer anti-epileptic drugs. Lamotrigine should probably be avoided in TRS, because of its likelihood of causing skin rash and apparent hypersensitivity reactions. Oxcarbazepine is potentially an alternative anti-epileptic drug for TRS because it is not metabolized through the air in oxide pathway. Nevertheless, 25% to 30% of patients who experience a rash in response to carbamazepine will also experience a rash with oxcarbazepine. Therefore, many clinicians would avoid oxcarbazepine. Gabapentin, leucosamide, levetiracetam, pregabalin, tiagabane, topiramate, Ozonosamide could be considered as alternative medications for TRS. These medications appear less likely to cause skin rash or hypersensitivity reactions. It is suggested that TRS be advised to add phenytoin to his list of medication allergies. So there you have it. Our highly esteemed viewers and listeners, that brings us to the end of this video. If it benefited you in any way, kindly remember to give it a thumbs up, to like it and to share it widely with your peers. Please leave your comments at the bottom. And if you haven't yet done so, I humbly urge you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. On behalf of our senior colleague, Dr. Nath Arua, I would like to promise you all that the very, very best is yet to come. Thank you very much for viewing this video. I sincerely appreciate your partnership, continued support and kind collaboration. We look forward to interacting with you in the next video, which will be part 394.